And a good spiritual morning to you once again. I'm Father Cosmas. Thank you for joining me today from my prayer corner here at home for a quick chat and our cup of coffee. So I thought for today, I would uh, dare to gently broach the issue of what happened in Kenosha earlier this week. Um, you know, I didn't really want to go into it, the whole, of course, Jacob Blake shooting that took place there uh, earlier in the week. But it happened in Kenosha. It's right in our backyard, and it's a national news story. I felt like I should at least touch on it. But I'm going to touch on it and then really focus on um, something that it implies for us in the spiritual life as for us as Orthodox Christians. So first and foremost, uh, we know what happened. Obviously, we received this sort of grainy cell phone video, uh, a little snippet of information that was taken. The media came out and some of the elected officials came out with statements right away about this, another horrifying incident of systemic racism, calling for the defunding of police departments and all sorts of, uh, you know, reactions. Then we started getting a little bit more information and we started realizing, well, maybe we don't know the whole story. Uh, something similar happened with the George Floyd incident earlier this year. More infor information came out and it started letting us know that, well, maybe we don't know the whole picture. All we got was one little snippet of incomplete evidence and maybe we shouldn't rush to making, uh, you know, a judgment based on this. I mean, we do have a legal system for a reason. There is something called due process. There is something called innocent until proven guilty. That's how we're supposed to handle these things uh, in court, with investigations, with a whole procedure and protocol uh, in place. It's not supposed to be handled by violence and burning of property on the street in riots. That's not supposed to be how we do things here in America. This is supposed to be a civilized society. However, that being said, of course, it's an emotional issue. I can't pretend to know what it's like to be a victim of racism in that way. And uh, so I understand that people are reacting in an emotional way based on what's happened in the past. But what I wanted to focus on was not really the political idea or the racial idea, just this idea of how it affects us on a much, much smaller scale in our personal lives and in our spiritual life. When we receive a little snippet of information, we don't have context, we don't know what happened before, we don't know what happened afterwards, we don't have the whole story, we get a little bit of information, and what do we do? We take it and we run with it. We react to it, we spread it, we pass it along, we add our own twist to it, we put our two cents into it, and before you know it, we've created this monster that's out of control. Sound familiar? We do it all the time. I think we typically call it gossip. We receive these little tidbits of information in our personal lives, and we can't help it. You know, we're out, we're talking to people, we're on the phone, we're discussing things. Hey, did you hear the latest? Hey, did you hear about so-and-so? Hey, did you hear about this? It happens all the time, especially in the life of the church, and uh, the one that's usually the the worst uh, recipient of it is usually the parish priest or the priest family. Hey, did you hear the latest? Did you hear about this or that or the other? And uh, people take it and they hear a little bit of incomplete information. And all before you know it, they've twisted it and they've run with it and they've spread this cancer of devastation to as many people as they possibly can. And I would say it's probably just not a good idea to do that. We see firsthand on a much bigger scale, uh, the devastation of something like this that took place in Kenosha. If that vi video snippet of the cell phone was not immediately released and it was held on to for whatever reason, um, and then a full investigation took place and then all of the evidence was released publicly in a responsible manner, maybe, just maybe, they wouldn't have tried to burn down Kenosha and destroy and threaten lives, maybe. So it's kind of the same thing for us on a much smaller scale in our personal life. If someone tells you something, um, they say, hey, did you hear the latest? I mean, my initial response is no. And guess what? I don't need to. I'm not interested. Um, you know, I don't need to hear gossip. I don't want to know gossip. I don't want to participate in gossip. I try to close the door and shut that down immediately. 
I don't want to be responsible for half-truths. I don't want to be responsible for hearing little bits of information that then now I'm responsible for and I'm tempted to then pass along and spread and guess what? Hurt people because that's what gossip really does. It hurts people. And, uh, and that's something that we never want to do uh, as Orthodox Christians. So I would encourage you, especially now, because, you know, we're in this sort of isolated scenario because of COVID, and uh, we're not seeing people as much as we would like to, to be able to dispel gossip, but we're in this sort of weird sort of uh, pockets of people that are communicating, right, sort of behind closed doors, literally, because we're sheltering at home and spreading different rumors about each other. I would encourage you to not participate in that. Let people know right up front, if you've got gossip, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to participate it. I don't want to hurt anyone. And I don't want to be responsible for disseminating, you know, faulty information. Uh, and I certainly don't want to, you know, hurt somebody, especially someone that's close to me or someone that I, that I like or that I love. That's a very, very dangerous thing and something for us as Orthodox Christians, we never want to do. We never want to judge because we don't want to be judged. And we always want, we always want to make sure that we're erring on the side of love and compassion and mercy. Once again, may our Lord and Savior bless us and keep us this day and every day. Amen.